with USB thumb drives being the modern standard for cheap and quick removable media, and the three and a half and especially the five and a quarter floppy drives nearly non-existent. File exchange between a 1984 Tandy 1000 and a modern desktop is a challenge. A convenient bridge technology is the iOmega ZIP 100 disk. This media format was introduced nearly 10 years after the thousands debut. The drive is available with several host port connections. The two of interest here are the parallel port model and the USB model. Having previously used the zip drive with the Tandy by installing a second parallel port and a device driver found on the internet, I wanted to explore the steps needed to use the iOmega software. Research led me to install an NEC V20 CPU in place of the Intel 8088. The V20 which is still available, is pin compatible with the 8088 and is instruction compatible with the 8186. The IO Omega system requirements state DOS version 5 and above, but make no mention of the hardware. So I prepared a 5 and a quarter disc with DOS 6.22 and a copy of the IO Omega driver ASPIPPM1.sys and a copy of Guest. With the disk in the drive, powering on the Tandy resulted in successfully loading the device driver and the A prompt. Invoking guest at the command prompt was also successful, displaying the attached drive model and assigning a drive letter. Placing a disk in the zip drive, changing to the assigned drive, and typing DIR listed the directories on the disk. Next, I copied the iOmega drivers to the hard drive, made the necessary changes to the config sys file, removed the disk from drive A, and rebooted. The device driver loaded OK, but typing guest displayed the iOmega banner, announced it was finding a drive letter, and went off to who knows where. So DOS 3.3 is out of the picture. Next, I inserted the AMD stamped 8088 CPU. With DOS 6.22 disk back in drive A, the boot was halted at starting MS-DOS. I received the same results with the NEC stamped 8088. Back to the NEC V20 and the DOS 6.22 boot disk, I started Microsoft Diagnostics from a zip disk. Looking at the memory usage showed that DOS, the iOmega driver, and Guest used over 100K of memory. This would be crippling on a machine with limited memory to begin with. On this Tandy with 640K, about 530 was left free. The other drive is a ZIP100 USB model. When plugged into the USB port on a Windows machine, it is recognized instantly. I can now archive all my Tandy 1000 software on a CD or DVD. This last frame shows some other mods already done to the 1000. Along with the new parallel port, there is a SCSI controller and hard drive, and a volume control mounted on the parallel port bracket. The SCSI controller also requires the NECV20 as it was designed for a later system.